worst royal wedding I ever did. He was angry and I felt, you know, we were punished for that. To offend our queen uh, like he did in that book, you know, it really upset the king. And, and, you know, I don't think he could easily forgive that. And I imagine uh, the king's had strong words with him over it. Probably the reason why he didn't want to go and stay with him because he probably would get another lot. Hello, I'm Matt Wilkinson and welcome to our show, Royal Exclusive. With me today is legendary son, royal photographer, Arthur Edwards, MBE. Arthur, thanks for coming on. <laughs> pleasure. It's a pleasure, Matt. Excellent. Now, look, firstly, we learned this week that Prince Harry, when he was over um, for the Invictus Games ceremony, he didn't want to stay in a royal residence that was offered to him by the king because he didn't feel he had enough protection there. Does that make any sense to you? We've both been in palaces and royal residences. They're pretty safe, aren't they? What's going on here with Harry? Well, How can he make that claim? They're, they're protected by armed policemen, uh, every one of them, and uh, no, no, no exceptions unless you've got the right pass. You, no one can get in there. Now, you know, it has been known that people have climbed over the wall of Buckingham Palace, but they're pretty soon apprehended. Recently, there was someone who turned up with a crossbow at Windsor Castle, but he was quickly arrested. So, no, I think, uh, I think that was a, a poor excuse. I think uh, he wanted to stay in a hotel, and, uh, and, he, and he was determined to do that. And don't forget, he travels with a, a small uh, retinue of bodyguards as well. Uh, and so, so I suspect uh, that was the reason why he did it. He had his own protection and, uh, and he felt that was enough. Well, the stories are changing, aren't they? So famously, you know, they put a statement out saying that he wouldn't be able to see the king because the king was too busy. Now it emerges the king actually said, you can stay in one of our palaces if you want. And that means that me and you can have a bit of time to hang out. Now all of a sudden he's saying, well, I didn't want to stay there because I didn't feel safe. I mean, it just doesn't add up. No, does it? it doesn't. And this is this is the story of Harry, though. You know, ever since uh, he decided to leave the royal family and, and, and go his own way in the United States, and uh, he's he's just behaving, I think, sometimes appallingly. Certainly, some of the things he said about members of the royal family, um, certainly, and Camilla and 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 Catherine and uh, and and his brother. I think. Uh, you just don't do that with families. You know, you, your family's a, a, the most important thing in your life and, and you just do everything to keep the family together and, and, and at peace. And, uh, and I imagine the king's sort of unhappy with Harry being around people where he could learn stories and, 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 and hear gossip and, and then put it in either his next book or his next podcast or his next radio or TV interview. And, uh, and it looks like he's, he's well informed, but of course, you know, the king uh, felt very upset with, with that last thing Harry did, the book, uh, especially what he said about his lovely wife, Camilla, you know, because, I mean, they're a very, very loved-up couple and, and, you know, to, to offend, offend our queen uh, like he did in that book, you know, it really upset the king and, and, you know, I don't think he could easily forgive that. And I imagine uh, the king's had strong words with him over it. Probably the reason why he didn't want to go and stay with him because he probably would get another lot. Well, it might not just. It might not only be the king that didn't want Harry staying in a well, in a royal residence. Well, you know, I think I think if if you're referring to his brother, well, you know, I think that's that's going to take an awful lot of uh, peacemaking for that to, that feud to end because uh, William's pretty angry about that, and he and he doesn't doesn't seem to care who he tells about that. You know, he's, he's he feels that um, you know his brother. Well, just referring in, in that opera, well, Meghan as well, referring to that uh, Oprah Winfrey interview about, you know, the royals are racist in many ways because they questioned the colour of Archie's skin. Well, I mean, you know, I've talked to people with mixed, ra mixed, mixed race and, and they say well, that's a normal conversation you have uh, when, you, when you're expecting your first child. And they've gone back on that as well. Well, now they have, racist. yeah, but, you know, then he's saying, then he quickly said, oh, it wasn't the Duke of Edinburgh or the Queen that said it. And then, you know, and, and at a later date, the Queen put out a statement saying, you know, our recollections vary. Well, I imagine, you know, most people will realise that was just the Queen saying, look, we don't believe anything you say, you know. So, mm. uh, in my view, um, Harry, if he comes here, fine, he's welcome here, obviously. He's, he's a prince of the realm, although he's decided to uh, keep the title but not do any work. Uh, I don't think he's entitled to stay in a royal palace. I think, he, you know, book into... Uh, a hotel if any time, but you know, you know, he's not, 
He's not putting, look, you know, to be a member of the royal family in this country is a huge, huge job. A, you're on show, you're in this electronic goldfish bowl, bowl all the time, people watching you, watching everything you do, everything you say, and a lot of responsibility that carries. And he didn't want that anymore. He wanted to go. I don't know why he went, because he was so popular here. I remember going working with him. He was fantastic. He was just amazing. He was, uh, especially with children, he was, a, he was absolutely brilliant. And I travelled the world with him and I did really enjoy working with him. But, you know, now I really don't care if I ever see him again because the way he's behaved towards the king and our queen and his brother and, and his brother and his sister-in-law is appalling. And, uh, and I just feel that he's, it's about time uh, he realised that. And, and, you know, he can't come and stay in palaces. You know, he was, though the king, I mean, the king still loves him and he would love him to come back and work for the family, but... No, 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 as long as he's not going to write stories about it, and uh, and I think while that while that situation's still ongoing, I think that uh, there's nothing's going to change. Well, it, it what my understanding is that that Harry didn't want to stay in the pat or this 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 royal residence that was offered because it um it was in a visible location with public entrance and exit points with no police protection. Now I can tell you that he actually stayed when he was over here at the Cowarth Park Hotel, yeah. which we know, the Cowarth Park Hotel, which is a short drive from Windsor Castle. Yeah. Um, it's just off Crown Estates land, it's just off Windsor Great Park. But it's where um, Harry and William stayed the night before Harry's Wedding to Meghan. I mean, it's, it's something that they know, but yeah. it's, it's a five-star hotel. It's palatial. It's a really nice place. You know, I, I can't afford to stay there. I think it's like five, six hundred pounds a night or something like yeah. that. But that's where he stayed, as opposed to a, a, a royal residence. I mean, is, is that we're not security experts. Does, does, does that make well, sense to you? That you it, down a it, does, it, it seems a lame excuse, personally. I mean, you know, royal palaces are fortresses you know, everything is everything's protected i mean balmoral i mean they're just i mean it's just it's just so protected and and they're, and they're so proud of that the metropolitan police you know that that, that what they do um and you know from as when when the king goes out to balmoral the metropolitan police go up there with him i mean you know they do long duties up there so no it's 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 a fact that they are safe he just preferred the hotel mm. in my view don't go anywhere because we have plenty more coming up in the rest of the show. I thought to myself, you know, this is all showbiz rubbish. The whole thing was just uh, stage managed to suit them. Me and you have been working together for like four or five years, yeah. but you're celebrating a bit of an anniversary this year, aren't you? Well, I've done 50 years on the paper. So it's your golden know. anniversary. Well, golden. you could call it that. <laughs> I like to thing it long service. <laughs> 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 I, I, uh, I'm quite proud of that fact, actually, because... Um, you know, I, uh, I've been working for Mr Murdoch for all these years and, you know, he's a good employer and uh, and he's always been very fair with me. And uh, I feel this is a great paper, you know, and and and, uh, and we're pretty quick with the news. We're pretty quick with the royal news, I mean, and uh, and uh, and great exclusives. And th thanks a lot to you, Matt. I mean, you've been doing brilliantly since you've joined the uh, royal reporting team and, um, and it's been... Um, it's been enjoyable, um, but I think we're going to not do too much in the near future with this. Well, well exactly. So election, the, yeah. the king. Um, you must have seen many prime ministers and stuff with with the queen back oh, yeah. in you know when yeah. she when she was around. But so the, so Sunak has called an election uh, July the fourth. We finally know, but he had to go to speak to the king to to tell him that he was yeah. to dissolve Parliament at some stage and that he was going to hold a general election. This a big moment for the king. Do you think this is his first uh, general election as monarch? He's going to have lots of constitutional roles. He's going to take up a lot of his time and attention. It is, but you know, I mean, he 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 said farewell to Liz Truss. He he's, he said face probably say farewell to Mr Sunak and uh, probably welcome a new prime minister and all in in two years. I mean, it's, that's pretty impressive. But um, the thing is, uh, with with a general election, um, you know. Uh, everything of importance that would sort of outshine uh, reporting on the election gets cancelled. And uh, I imagine the King was pretty cross about that because, you know, he's just come back from a, a long illness. I mean, we didn't see him for, for, for months. And he's been really putting a big shift in, you know. I mean, he's, he's working every day this week. And um, 
because of now the election, you know, a lot of it's going to be cancelled. I hope some of the big events go ahead. I hope that, you know, we get to Normandy with him and uh, and, and Troop in the Colour, you know, the big events in London, his official birthday. Uh, but, um, you know, the, the election is, is important and um, uh, it will and should do supersede everything. It's a, a big moment for the country. A, a democracy is the most important thing that we can change the government any time we f we feel it they're not doing the job for us and uh, and 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 the king will accept that you know he knows he knows that's part of his duty that uh, you know he's he's head of state but the prime minister is the elected uh, head of the government and that's more important so you know we'll we'll probably be kicking our heels for a bit but you know imagine when the election's over we'll be run off our feet with it every single day but. But the um, but he is, uh, you know, the king uh, is very interested in the in the running of the country. I imagine every day they have their weekly meeting with the prime minister. Now they're all very, it's very private, and no one ever knows what's said. But imagine uh, having worked with Prince Charles and for over forty years, he's very interested in. Uh, I think he's very much a socialist, in my view. You know, he's very interested in in the in the in the benef you know helping the the less well off, and mm. uh, and you know lots of these things he's done over over mostly unheralded and and you would unheard of. You know, he, and he would make sure that he gets his points of view to the prime minister. Now, uh, be a be a stupid prime minister, in my view, didn't listen to him because he's a very wise man and and very much a visionary. I can remember, you know, him talking about organic food and people calling him a crank and now you can't move in supermarkets for organic food. I can remember him talking about poor architecture and the architects condemned him. But look at, go and look at Paternoster Square now after, he, it's beautiful. Um, and, um, and so, and, and also the King is not frightened to speak out. He does his research. Uh, he, he gets his facts in order, and he and he says it, and he's not frightened of the criticism. And uh, he's he's an amazing man, but um, he's going to be he's going to be doing like most of us, just watching party, <laughs> party political broadcasts on the yeah. television. Uh, but you know, having said that, um, it's only for six weeks, and that's not a lifetime, and and it will be back to normal soon. Well, it might help him, really, because he set off at such a, such a huge pace after the doctors said that, um, you know, he was OK to kind of return to work. But there was a sense of frustration, I think, wasn't there, with the King earlier this year that he that his, you know, his, his reign had kind of been interrupted while he was dealing with it, with his with his cancer treatment. I think he was happy. He, he said the other day he was um, he was glad to be out of his cage on, on right, an engagement, yeah. you know, yeah. now he has to go back into the cage a couple of weeks. But we still should get him at Trooping, uh, Royal Ascot. These things were, you know, would, would, would be great. But it'll just be the, as you pointed out, it'll just be, you know, some of the, not the more mundane, but some more of the, the that may be veering into kind of political areas or yeah. might be, you know, might a little bit vulnerable to be um, talking about, you know, major political issues and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I also think our Queen, uh, Camilla, will be relieved because uh, it was with her last week in... Uh, in Rye in Sussex, and she said, uh, she said, you know, she asked me how I was, and I said, fine, ma'am. I said, you know, I'm pleased that the king's getting well. She said, yes, she said, if only he'd do what he was told, you know. So, you know, really, she probably, you know, wants him to slow down a wee bit. Um, but um, no, he's, uh, he's, you know, I saw him this week at the Chelsea Flower Show, and he looked amazingly well, you know. So he's, and in fact, he he's raring to go, but. I should imagine he's still got to take it easy. You know, he's he's got to pace himself. How could me telling him to pace himself? <laughs> Stay tuned. There's loads more to come in the rest of the show. I've done some really lovely royal weddings. I did both King Charles's weddings. I did William's wedding. I did Andrew's wedding. I did Sophie and Edward. You know, I mean, they were they were lovely occasions. But that day, I couldn't I couldn't get out of Windsor quick enough. These six weeks, as I say, where the, where the rules will have to slow down, sadly, and, and, yeah. and not do as many engagements, it's probably not the right time, even if there is a right time, uh, for the Princess of Wales to, you know, to come back. We, we, she's still at home. There's been loads more. Uh, the usual suspects have been going online and, and making up 
nonsense. I, I can say she she is at home. She is still recovering. She's still kind of obeying doctor's orders. But there's there's absolutely no need to rush her back, particularly as as everything's going to be about the election at the moment. Um, I think I think um, I think she'll she'll come back when the doctors say so. And and, and the six weeks will probably be a welcome relief to her that mm. she's not no pressure. We did hear um, from people who've been working with her this week because. She, like a year ago, she set up this uh, this centre for early childhood and um, set up a task force to kind of look into ways to um, to kind of get businesses involved to kind of really help and, and use the science to kind of help uh, children ages you know between zero and and five. There was a briefing this week because they announced their first set their, their first report. It was a sixty page report saying that, that if they put these proposals into place, they could forty five billion pounds back into the government coffers. But we were told that not only are the Princess of Wales read the report, um, she was the driving force behind it, and she was excited by all the proposals that come out. Bearing in mind that we know that you know that she is unwell and she's recovering, is this the Princess of Wales that you know, you know, that, that, who's, who's still working behind the scenes and getting involved in her in her big projects? Is this what we should expect of her? Imagine, um, like the King, when he was when getting treatment, he was still working uh, on his boxes and stuff. I imagine she's doing the same. I imagine she has her staff, you know, planning things and. Uh, events and and also uh, projects that she's heavily involved in so imagine even though we're not seeing her she's not making public appearances I imagine she's still pretty busy doing that and um yeah and i think uh she's just an incredible woman in my view she's uh, she not only a mother uh, and, and rearing three beautiful children she's a, a great member of the royal family. She's a hard-working member of the royal family. She's a great photographer, I have to say that. I must say her pictures get better and better, and she shares them with us all. And, uh, and, and, she's, um, and, and she's just a huge star in the royal family. I mean, there's no secret that she is, she is the biggest star of them all. And, uh, and you know, and she's obviously recovering and she'll when the doctors say you can get back and, and go out there and engage with the public again. I mean, the thing is they can't engage with the public because of infection, you know, that's the problem. So it's not like she wouldn't want to, it's just she's ordered not to. And um, and so look, you know, the King, we had to wait patiently for the King and he made his return and he's back working back to normal. And let's just see, it won't be long before I think we'll see Catherine again, but you know, this six week break now will be good for her, I think. It was a shame that they are short-handed at the moment. Um, although I did see Beatrice and Eugenie yeah. this week at a garden party yeah. supporting William, which I thought was quite nice, actually. I mean, they're lovely, lovely girls, those. I've known those since they were children, since they were come out of the hospital in their mother's arms. They are just super girls, and uh, that was a great support. And then I saw Sarah Phillips there as well, you know. So some of these, some of these younger members uh, could get involved in... Well, for instance, the garden party. I mean, William t took that on himself. I think the king was due to be there, and he had to cancel for some reason. And um, and they, and their girls came along, and, and and you know, and and we don't think they're important, but they are. I mean, they are they are grandsons, granddaughters of the late queen, and they are and they are nieces of the king, and and they they. They have a role to to fulfil, you know. Maybe not in the in the front line. Maybe not, you know, out there. But you know, supporting the members of the royal family, like the garden parties, you know. And 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 they'll be at Ascot. Uh, I'm sure they're sorting their dresses out for it at the very moment. But and they'll be there for that. And you know, and they are nice. They're really hardworking, very caring girls. I mean, usually, I mean, she's an amazing lady. I mean, she uh, I had a can't say she did me and myself, me a personal favour once with her, with help she did, she gave me. I mean, she is a lovely person. So uh, that that was interesting. And of course, William, I mean, William is just taken on a massive amount, you know, he's, uh, you know, without Catherine, but he's, as always, he's, uh, he'll probably be a little relieved that he's had a little break now. So, so you say William invited the other members of the royal yeah. family. So we invited Beatrice, Eugenie, yeah. Mike and Zara Tindall, and Peter Phillips yeah. um, to the garden party. And as you were saying there, it's just really nice to actually, actually remember them again. Do you know what I mean? Also, they're family. They're his cousins. You know, they're all his cousins. They're all cousins. They're all family. 
and and you do and and I just think it's a lovely thing. I just think it's a really nice thing. And do we need to see more of them, Arthur? I Could would like we... to see more of Beatrice and Eugenie. Yeah, I do. Working feel... royals, or uh, I, I I I don't know. I mean, I, I should imagine the king's giving it some thought because. You know, they're very short-handed at the moment. They are. I mean, if you think there's, 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 there really is only William and Catherine and the King and Queen. And um, all right, and we know Princess Anne is tirelessly working and we know that Edward and Sophia are really hard working. But, um, you know... I, they do some I, really good stuff with charities, Beatrice well, and Eugene. Oh, but they've they also do. got families and, and jobs. They've never actually taken up this kind of working no, royal role. No, they haven't, but they are involved in things. I mean, you know, I mean, they are really... They are involved in, in, in charities and they do. And they've all their life done that. You know, their mother and father have taught them that, you know, that's their, you know, they've got born to great privilege and that with that privilege comes duty and they, and they, they realise that. But for some reason, I think maybe because, you know, Prince Andrew is, is not the most popular person in the world at the moment, maybe people think like that, you know, but I don't know. I, I do feel they're... Uh, and it just, I was great seeing them in that, that gun. I know it was pouring with rain, but when I saw those pictures, I thought, well done, you know, good on you, yeah. William, because uh, there's all your cousins there. And I see them at Sandringham at Christmas time when the whole family meet together. And they are really, really, you know, they're really great friends. So, yeah, I hope it happens anyway. Well, I think if it doesn't happen with the king, it will happen, certainly, uh, I, with William, yeah. I may be being naughty here, but... Eugenie was always good friends with Harry and Meghan. I've maybe introduced them, depending on whose story you kind of believe. She's been out to California a couple of times. Yeah. They've kind of, and then she turned up to the garden party, and, and she, I think she put on Instagram, oh, it was great here to be supporting um, the royal family. I'm probably being a bit naughty here, but is, 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 you, is Eugenie like a, <coughs> you know, a firm, trusted kind of member of the royal family for William to, to, to use as a support still? I think she's a kind person, very kind person. I know her, well, I don't know well, but I've worked with her a lot. I think she's a tremendously kind person, and um, uh, and I must say, she uh, she's very close to Harry. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, she was very close to Harry. And imagine, um, I think it's good that you know people are like that. I think it's lovely that you know they can keep in touch with Harry. You know, I mean, I mean, look, Harry's not a Harry's just, oh, I just lost his way a bit in my view, you know. I think he is, he is the prodigal son in my view and he was just got to, he's got to think about what he's doing and think what the damage he's done and, and you know, everybody is, is, is capable of forgiveness and, and I'm sure, but, but you know, it's, I think, look, Harry is, is just, he is the prodigal son, but you know, the prodigal son did return to the fold and let's all hope that happens one day. I hope it does happen, but uh, at the moment, I mean, has he been married seven years now, is it? Well, it's seven year anniversary. Yeah, yeah so yeah. seven so years this, and... This uh, week was their seventh week. Do you remember that? You must remember. Where were you on the, you were there in Windsor? Oh, I was there, hated the day. The day was a miserable day. I mean, it was a... Really? I thought... Well, it was, was it? Well, I can tell you now, uh, it was the worst royal engagement I ever did, a royal wedding I ever did, because Harry was determined to keep the newspapers away from it as much as possible. Everything was done on long lenses. I mean, a car toy had an 800 millimeter lens photographing the guests arriving. And uh, the, the photographers they engaged for the job uh, was there, was five feet away, you know, it was just hopeless. And, uh, and then the carriage shot, when they went past me in the carriage, they looked the other way. So for me, it was a disaster. And- um, Well, was that deliberate? You were made to feel unwell? I felt so. I felt, it wasn't just me, it was the whole of the, the, the British press, you know, they were, uh, in many ways, um, badly treated. I think it was um, Harry was angry with us really because some of the things that have been said about Meghan, and quite rightly, some of the things that were said about Meghan during the engagement were pretty harsh. Uh, I want to sort of mention them now, but they were some of them were pretty unfair as well. Uh, and so he was angry, and um, and I felt, you know, we were punished for that. And, and in fact, I never got one picture in the paper published from that day. And uh, when I think, you know, I've done some, I've done some really lovely royal weddings. I've did both Prince Charles, King Charles's weddings. I did William's wedding. I did um, Andrew's wedding. I did Sophie and Edward, you know, I mean, they were, 
they were lovely occasions, but that today, I couldn't, I couldn't get out of Windsor quick enough, I promise that you that the day. the worst royal wedding you oh, had to cover. Yeah, and then when the baby was born, when Archie was born, that was another, in my view, a disaster because I knew we was not going to get a picture of it. Everybody was hoping we would get pictures of it. I mean, obviously, when, when, when uh, William was born and Harry was born and George and Charlotte and Louis, we got great pictures outside the hospital. I remember, and William and Catherine especially, they made such an effort to show the whole world their, their new baby. But I mean, I mean, I say this, but uh, I mean, we, baby, Harry's baby, Archie, was was almost teething before we found out it was born, you know? I mean, it was, uh, uh, we were led to believe that she was gone into labor at two o'clock when the baby had been born many hours mm. earlier. We were led to believe it was going to be a home birth and it was at a hospital. There was no, the whole thing was just uh, stage managed to suit them. And in fact, I never stayed in Windsor. There was a royal tour to Germany with the King and Queen and I went with them and, uh, and, 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 and couldn't get away from Windsor quick enough. And I remember showing uh, Camilla in in, I think, Munich, uh, the first pictures of Archie that was taken by the Press Association. I remember really? showing her on my phone and she sort of, and, and that was the first time she saw him, you know. So it was, um, it was, it was, it was yeah, difficult times. So I, I have to say though, you know, that first year of Megan, that working with her on the road, I mean, you know, we went all over the country. I mean, she was incredible. I mean, I thought she was, um, and I was saying this, you know, I thought she was a great asset to the family. And I kept asking the uh, palace if we could have a meeting with her, you know, the royal people, the people covered the royals could have a meeting with Meghan, like we did with Catherine. Uh, and, you know, so introduce ourselves and get to let her to get know who, who was writing about her and photographing her. And I was assured it was going to happen, but it never did. And, um, uh, and then pretty soon, like, you know, she'd made her mind up that they were going and that was it. But um, you get a sense that they made, if you're talking about the wedding, everyone was made to feel unwelcome. Not everybody, uh, just the Just, just, the, just British the British media. press. Yeah, just British the people press, that yeah. travel, the, travel the whole world and yeah. spend their whole life. All um, my life, coming. you know, and the Opera Winfrey had met them once. She was a yeah. guest. Uh, the Clooney's, you know, the guests. I mean, never met them before, but they were the guests. And, uh, you know, I thought to myself, you know, this is all, all showbiz, Rubbish, you know. Did you ever get a sense then that, that they were they wanted out, that they wanted a California life, that they wanted I, showbiz, that they weren't interested. If they weren't interested in in making people feel welcome at the wedding, it just seems to me they just they made a decision back in seven years ago. That they well, I look out. at I'm looking. I mean, Oprah Winfrey was there, and uh, and then the first big interview they did was Oprah Winfrey, and and you know most of that interview was left on the cutting room floor because it was so so one sided and it was so unfair. And I think about watching it now and, and you know, the visit about Archie and the, and the colour of his skin. I, I was, I was, I was, I knew they'd be, I know they'd be seething. I knew the Queen would be seething. I knew that the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles would be seething. It would be so unfair because one thing they're not is racist. You know, they are not. I've been with, I've been with a King all over Africa, all over South America, I've, been, I've never seen only just engaging and, and enjoying the company of these people. So, you know, it wouldn't be no way that he would um, be like that. He, he's just an, uh, and it, it was just an unfair thing to say. And it, but it was, it was, you know, I mean, she delivered it like an actress delivered it and it, and, and, an opera responded going, wow, you know, as though like, a, uh, and it, you know it was just it was awful and um, and then then of course some of the Netflix stuff and the book oh god you know it was dreadful but um, so to confirm Arthur you didn't do anything to celebrate <laughs> Harry and Meghan's seventh wedding anniversary I'll work. no I, I don't even I, I, I'm surprised it lasted that long <laughs> <laughs> no many people said it wouldn't but it has, I mean they obviously you know they're probably happy together they've got two lovely children and it's one of the saddest things of all, Matt, of course, is that the children don't get to see their grandfather, either grandfather, you know, and, uh, and that's, really, that's really so awful because they're not getting to meet their cousins and, 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 to, and to know their cousins, and, and, and it's such a shame for them. There it is. Happier times this week 
Buckingham Palace garden parties, Chelsea flower show as well. Can you give us just a flavour? You've done lots of them. We, we talked about 50 yeah. years, your golden yeah. anniversary, but you've done a lot of these. Can you just give a flavour of what it's like? Many people haven't attended a Buckingham Palace garden party. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, the highlight in the calendar for, for many people. If you get a ticket and you get to go there, but what, it's like, what is it like at a garden party or Chelsea flower show when you're with the King, the Queen, Prince and Princess of Wales, etc.? Well, uh, I've been to several... Uh, garden parties with my wife and uh, they are they are amazing I mean first and foremost everybody's beautifully dressed I mean the women must spend millions of pounds on, on clothes they look lovely and then of course the royals come out and then there's a big big lineup and people think that lineup is exclusive but it isn't if you're a member if you've been invited you can join that lineup and you get to meet the king and queen king or the queen one woman does either side uh, but the food is lovely. There's so much of it. The tea is absolutely... I mean, tea is my favourite drink. It's absolutely... Yeah, I can testify for that. Tea yeah, is your and it is, drink. And it is. And it's really... And, it, and you can walk around the gardens and the lake and, and it is a most beautiful afternoon and, and you see so many people you know or they know you and, and it's, a, it's a really... And, it, and, the, and the two hours, it goes in a flash, you know, it so, goes so quickly. But it's really lovely. And... Um, uh, I uh, I've been to the Chelsea Flower Show every year for the last thirty years, it must be. And um, every year, the, where the Queen used to go, the Queen was the patron of the of the Royal Horticultural Society. And and the the big thing is the route she takes through the gardens. Everybody desperately wants uh, the Queen to. Uh, come through the garden. And we had a very, very famous gardener called Peter T. C. T. Seabrook. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. But I said, I, one year he asked me to go and do some pictures for him. And, and I said, are the royals coming past your stand? We had a wonderful stand there. It was called Sunflower Street. He said, oh, they never come here, never come to the sun stand. I said, oh, why is that? He said, oh, no, they just don't. So I was there and I saw Prince Charles walking by about two rows back. So I went over to said, Prince Charles, would you come and look at our garden, please? And he said, OK. And he came over and, uh, and Peter, like, went straight into his Uruhaya eat, eat mode and he started telling the king about what they were doing. And it was a fascinating... Uh, uh, it was called Sunflower Street and there was a bridge across the top. And, uh, and we... I think he won a gold medal for it that year, Peter. And, um, and we, next day we ran a big... Uh, page of pictures of the king with Peter. The following year, we had the queen, the queen mother, Princess Margaret, the, the emperor, the crown prince of Japan and Chelsea Clinton all came to Peter's stand. And, uh, and so it then became normal. And in fact, the last time the queen, she came just before she died, the year before she died. And... Uh, she came to Peter's stand and Peter had got this special bouquet made of flowers he'd grown in his own garden for her. And I remember getting the Queen sort of smelling the flowers and and she came in a little carriage, you know, a little, a little sort of cart. So she was, legs were not too good to walk around. So it was, but this year I went and um, the King and Queen were there. And of course, uh, they go separate routes um, one of the nicest pictures I took on the route was when they when they passed each other or going their separate ways and they were laughing at each other, meeting each other. Uh, so, you know, it's been uh, a busy week. I mean, there's been garden parties, there's been the flower show, and now there's been a six-week break. Well, exactly. Well, listen, I think we've covered everything for the week. As I say, we do have six or seven weeks, but we will still be covering every single royal job that happens, every kind of royal story. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, thanks, Arthur. Thanks for coming on. I've had a great time chatting. It's a pleasure, you, Matt. It's an also, it's a pleasure working with you, Matt, and as well. We'll see each other in, uh, hopefully, in Normandy for the D-Day celebration. Please God, yeah. yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the show, then please subscribe for more royal content.